Who's this? That's Steiner. Hmm. She'll catch a cold like yours if you don't keep her warm. All right, nurse. Yes, Doctor. Is Mommy still here? Yes, darling. Yes, you are quite right. Quite an unusual case. Very tricky to diagnose. I hope I was wrong. Have you ever met a similar case before? No, I haven't. I read about it. I had one about 14, 15 years ago. It was fatal then, of course, a matter of a few days. What are the odds now? It's difficult to say. The best chance is a massive transfusion. How long is it since she was admitted? About half an hour. I examined her immediately. Go on. I have her blood group checked at once. Mm, the sooner the better. I shall be in my office if you want me. I should like the transfusion set up anyway. Yes, of course. This isn't so good, sir. Hmm? Of all the rotten luck. Any use trying the blood bank? Oh, yes, sir. It's worth trying. Give me the regional transfusion officer, please. Do you think they're likely to have any? It's pretty doubtful, I should think. It's one of the rarest groups of all. But we have to hit it with an atypical leukemia, of all things. How long have you got? Four days, five days, even less. Is that the regional transfusion officer? Uh, Braithwaite here, St. Christopher's. So we're in urgent need of a supply of O-R-H-C-D-E. Can you help us? Oh, I was afraid of that. And a typical leukemia. A child of five. Yes. A single massive transfusion. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. None at the bank. They're going to check the register for suitable donors and ring me back. How many do we need? Three, isn't it? Yes. You say the mother came here with the child. Is she still here? She's in the waiting room. She wouldn't go home. Yeah, but I have a talk with her. Is she intelligent? Oh, yes, seems to be. The usual discretion. Mm -hmm. All right, Matthews. Thank you for working so fast. Sorry the result was what it was. It's been a rather long night, isn't it? Yes. Doctor, if it's bad news, I'd sooner have it straight. I'm sure you would. Penny's suffering from an extremely rare blood disease. Not to mince matters, until five years ago, we had no answer to it. But five years ago, a similar case treated in Madrid recovered. We're going to try the same treatment. Remove Penny's blood and replace it with an entirely new supply. Then, if you can do that, Mrs. Bishop, there is a complication. You know the blood's divided into various groups. Yes. But when a patient needs a transfusion, a supply of blood of the correct group has to be obtained. Unfortunately, Penny belongs to a very rare group. But isn't there a blood bank? It, it's stored, isn't it? Yes, but because Penny belongs to such a rare group, it's, it's difficult to find donors. 
At the moment, there's no blood of pennies type in the bank. Oh. Now, just a minute. It's not as bad as it sounds. There are bound to be donors on the register who belong to Penny's group. It's a nationwide organization. In a matter of hours, we shall probably have all the blood we need. But surely my blood's the same as Penny's. Couldn't you... Not necessarily. We'll group you, of course. How much blood do you want? About three pints. That means three donors. You mean you can only take a pint from one donor? That's the maximum in one transfusion. And how long before you take some more? Several months. Oh. Doctor, how long have you got to find the three donors? There'll be time enough. The sooner the better, naturally. I see. I asked for it straight and I got it, didn't I? Let's go and see Penny, shall we? There. Is that better now? Yes, thank you, Mummy. My throat's still sore. It'll soon be better, darling. Try and go to sleep now, there's a good girl. All right, but I'm awfully hot. Well, lie still and then you'll get cool. All right, Mummy. Mummy? Yes, darling? Do I have to go to work soon? Not yet. I'm going to stay here with you. What, shall I feel cool? Yes, darling. Now go to sleep. Don't worry. I'll still be here. Where do you work? In the Western Bank, Piccadilly. Would you like me to telephone them for you? Thank you. I don't imagine you could add up to ten at the moment. No. Only to three. If there's anyone at home you'd like me to contact for you? No, thank you. There are only the two of us. I see. My husband was killed in a car crash three years ago. Three seems to be my unlucky number, doesn't it? It won't be this time. I go and see if there's any news. You'll let me know at once. Of course. Even if it's bad news. All right. Do you want to stay here? If I may, I, I don't want you to be frightened. I'll send you in a comfortable chair. <laughs> You're very kind. I just like children. Any news? Not yet, Jim. Coffee? Yes, thanks. Sun will be up soon. Why don't you try and get some rest? Mm. Too much to do. I'm in the theatre at ten. Yes? Yes, put them through. Let's see, transfusion office. Yes, both wait here. You have? Good. Very well, let's have them. They've got a list of donors. Take down these names, will you? Yes. Mrs. Amelia Wilberforce, 4 Hilton Place, Belgrave Square, SW1. Yes. George Robinson, 85 Collingwood Street, Liverpool. Very well. Bye. Only two? So far. They're going to contact all the local offices to see if there are any names that haven't been passed through to them. But there must be more. Only two in the entire country. Only two on the register. What happens now? How do we get these people in? Oh, the police will see to that. The child's mother, Mrs. Bishop, wants us to check her group. Worth trying. I'll get it later. Get me Scotland Yard. Yes, it's an emergency call. Looking for a man called George Robinson. He lives here, doesn't he? George Robinson? What's he been up to? Oh, nothing at all. I just want a word with him. Here you are. Ground floor front. All right, thanks very much. Oh, uh, George Robinson? Yes. Well, do you mind if I come in for a minute? Not at all. Thank you. It isn't bad news, is it? No, no, no. It's all right. Would you sit down? Excuse the mess, but George is joining his ship this morning. He's a first-class stoker. No, it's all right, thank you. Well, what can I do for you? There's a child lying seriously ill in a London hospital. She needs a blood transfusion, but she belongs to a very rare blood group. Now, you're down on the record as belonging to the same group. They want you to help. You mean they... they want my blood? Yes, that's right. 
They'll take it from you here at the Northern, then they'll fly it straight to London. Can you come right away? No. What? Look, Robinson, you realize, don't you, that this little girl in London is dying? I don't want to hear about it. But, well, Mrs. Robinson... And not as my wife. But, George, can't you... I'm sorry, I've, I've got to get to my ship. Well, listen, won't you come down to the hospital anyway and just let them... No. Know? Bye, honey, I'll write you from London. Look after yourself. Just a minute, Robinson. You just answer me one thing before you go, and answer it straight. If this kid in London were black instead of white, would you be willing then... Look, I've told you I've got nothing to say. Now, leave me alone. Do you think I have no feelings? I've got a child of my own, haven't I? Do you think I want? I've got to get to my ship. Bye, honey. Well, of all the... No, don't say it. He's not like that, really. Something happened during the war and... Oh, I don't know. He just won't talk about it, even to me. When does he sail? An hour from now. But his ship's due at the port of London on Wednesday night. Maybe they could get someone there to persuade him. Well, I report it, but... He wouldn't want that child to die. You tell them that, won't you? I'll tell them. All right, Harvey. Don't trouble. I'll answer it. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Constable. Can I help you? Yes, sir. I'm looking for a Mrs. Amelia Wilberforce. Then you found her. My wife. I am Edgar Wilberforce. But uh, do come in, won't you? Thank you, sir. I'm sorry to trouble you so early in the day, sir. No, 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 not at all. We're, uh, <laughs> I'm afraid we're not very early risers. We were about to breakfast. This way. Now, sir, what... My wife will be down in a few moments. She's younger than I am, considerably younger, but a little delicate. I tell her she should really take breakfast in her room, but she refuses to deny me her company. And, indeed, I should miss her sorely. A gay spirit, Constable. A gay spirit. Quite so, sir. Will you, uh, Will you take snuff with me? No, thank you, sir. <laughs> well, it's an enjoyment that's not to everybody's taste. <coughs> ah, that's better. Oh, my dear fellow, I do beg your pardon. Do sit down, will you? Oh, no, thank you, sir. I'd rather that... Ah, yes, 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 of course, my wife. You would like the interview to be private? Oh, no, sir. It's not exactly a police matter. It's about a blood transfusion. There's a young girl lying seriously ill in St. Christopher's Hospital. Oh, dear, dear. dear. Mrs. Wilberforce is required as a blood donor, uh, if she's willing. Willing? Amelia Willing? I can assure you, Constable, that if it was necessary, she would sacrifice her last drop of blood to help any poor soul in distress. Oh, I'm sure she would, sir. A brave, generous being, and beautiful. But I'm sure you're a busy man, and perhaps I'd better call her. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, sir. Yes, the yes. matter is urgent. Yes. Ah, there you are, Harvey. I was just going to call your mistress. This gentleman has some business with her. Perhaps you'd like to go and bring her down yourself, sir. Yes. A splendid idea, Harvey, splendid. You'll excuse me a moment, Constable, won't you? Yes, sir. Thank you. Amelia. Amelia, my love. He's a bit of a queer one, isn't he? You're wasting your time, I'm afraid. Why, isn't Mrs. Wilberforce here? No, she's not. She died two years ago. Died? Careful, my love. Careful of the stairs, please. I know one day you'll fall and kill yourself. Well, Inspector, we haven't been very successful so far. It's early days yet, Dr. Braithwaite. Unfortunately, it's a matter of days. In five, that child will be dead. We'll have another go at that coloured chap as soon as he docks tomorrow. His ship's due in the port of London to pick up some extra cargo. Next stop, South America. Tomorrow night. I don't think I'd put my shirt on Robinson, if I were you. No. Well, thank you for coming, Inspector. It's all right. It's maddening, though, isn't it? To think there's probably some little man sitting in Tony Pandy or somewhere. And we don't even know he exists. Well, I'll be at the yard if you want me. 
This isn't my usual cup of tea, but they've given me permission to stay on it for the moment. Good. Get rather bored with the same old routine week after week. Get in a rut, you know. What's your usual job? Murder. What? Huh. Well, I hope you have some luck soon. Bye. Thank you, Inspector. Goodbye. What time is it? Just after 11. And it's still Monday. You brought Penny into us just eight hours ago. I shall have to take your word for that. I know what's in your mind. The report's through. I'm afraid you can't help us. The blood's perfectly good, but it's just no use to Penny. I did warn you. Yes. Well, is there any other news? Yes, we've great hopes that by tonight or tomorrow, we shall have a sufficient supply. But you haven't found any yet. No, we're on the track of some, but it takes time. We've given Scotland Yard several names. They're very efficient. Just a question of being patient. But you haven't found any yet. No, not yet. How long have you been a doctor? Ten years. Why? Have you ever known anyone in the same blood group as Penny's? Yes. Yes, I have. Why do you ask? There are such people, then. They, they do really exist. In Penny's blood group? Yes, definitely. And this one you knew? It was twelve years ago. I never even knew his name. You can say what you like, but the fact remains that she did drop the scissors. If she can't control her love life in her hands, she'd better go. You don't mean that. <sighs> Probably not. What's the time? Well, just after 11. I'm not a cast for it. I haven't any breakfast. I'll have a tray sent in to you. Yes. Yes, put them on. Yes, speaking. Right, let me have it. Timothy Mahoney. Yes. Yes. Right, we'll follow that up immediately. Yes, please do. I hope I have better luck than the last two. Give me Scotland Yard. I want to speak to Inspector Lane. Hello? Oh, Dr. Braithwaite. Oh, good. Timothy Mahoney, 12 Dean's Mews, Dean Street, Soho, London, West 1. Oh, come in, Sergeant. You're the very man I want. All right, Dr. Braithwaite, I'll get a man on this right away. If our luck's in, we'll have him to you within the hour. Any more come in? What? Oh, well, it's early days yet. What? Oh, did I? Oh, I'm sorry. Goodbye. Nice, easy job for you, Bellamy. This chap's wanted for the blood transfusion at St. Christopher's. I told you about that, didn't I? You mean the kiddies, sir? Huh? Yes. Take a car, scoop him up, and hand him over. And don't waste any time, will you? They're in a mess with that youngster. Timothy Mahoney. Know anything about him? Not a thing. Why? You know, the name seems familiar. Means nothing to me. <clears throat> oh, by the way, you can only ask him to go, you know. There's no compulsion. What if he's not at the address? Well, that's easy. Find him. Yes, sir. Thirteen star, one pound. Tim Mahoney, twelve stone, ten pound. Don't get changed. You left my kid. But watch yourself. I'll go take ten minutes after this past schedule to start. Don't worry, you'll make it. Great kitty, your boy, Harry. Wasn't kidding. I put a lot of money on him winning tonight. Yes, but Mahoney's a good punchy enough. He happens to land when anything can happen. I'm surprised at you, Danny boy. You mustn't let him land, Mark. Yes, but if he does... You I'll... heard me. If your boy wins tonight, why, anything might happen to you afterwards. And him. Now, look, if you think you can... What's your proposition, Harry? Now, you're talking, Danny. It only takes a dive in the third. Well, he'll never do it, Harry. do he? That bug's been finished for years. You give him an extra 50 pounds, he'll dive like a submarine.
Maybe you're right. All right, Mac. Good luck tonight, Tim. Oh, thanks, Gunner. I'm hoping. Gun, you can do Booth all right. He's yellow. He can't take it downstairs. Here, yeah. be there to cheer me tonight. I need a supporter. Thanks, Tim. We gotta stick together. I could make you champion of the world. Sling it, Gunner. I don't like bums hanging around my boys. Go on, up it. Oh, get out of here. Do me a favor. Don't stop riding him, Danny. He was a good prospect once. So was I. Maybe someday I'll be like him. Don't if you know when to quit. Who knows when to quit? How long have you been with me, Tim? Ten years. Yeah, ten years has taken you to turn me from a might have been into a has been. I treated you like my own son. <laughs> Twenty-five percent of your purse hasn't made me rich, you know. It helped. Oh, well, all right. How'd you like to make an extra fifty quid tonight? How do I do that? Take a dive in the third. Well, what do you take me for? Listen, I may be on the way down, but I've never thrown a fight no, yet. Don't be a dope. You can't win tonight anyway. You haven't got a chance with Booth. Why don't you cash in while you've got the chance? And another thing, if you don't lie down tonight, Flash Harry will see that you never fight again. That's a promise. Look, Tim boy, 50 quid extra just for lying down a bit sooner than you would anyway. Hey? Eh? Yeah. There's a fiver. Get yourself a few drinks. and he go on the booze, but he always finishes up doing what I tell him. You're a wise boy, Danny. On the head on his shoulders. <laughs> well, I'm going around to see Joe. Would like me to put something on for you? Tell Joe I'm on booth for six quid. All right. Seven. <laughs> All right. You, Mr. Marks? That's right. I'm a police officer. I'm looking for Timothy Mahoney. They tell me that Joey's manager. Well, what about it? He's wanted urgently at St. Christopher's Hospital to give a blood transfusion. Is that all? They told me that his lodgings, he'd be here. Sorry, pal, you missed him. He went out two minutes ago. Where can I find him? Any of the pubs in town. But he's fighting tonight, isn't he? That's right. Kensington Arena. When's he due there? Mm, his fight's due at 8.30. He'll be there at 7. He's never liked to fight. Even when he's training in the pubs? He'll be there at 7. Right, so shall I. I'll fix your ringside seat. No, don't bother. I shan't be waiting for the fight. Up to you, pal. Yes, I see what you mean. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. It's to be expected. It doesn't affect the time limit, of course, provided our heart stands up to it. Nothing more from the bank? Uh, no. Lane's going to pick up this boxer fellow tonight. And Robinson tomorrow? Yes. But even if we get them both. How's the mother setting up to it? Very well, sir. She's a rather unusual type. Good. I'll look after as best you can. Mm -hmm. Well, did you get some fresh air? I suppose so. I walked. Good. I thought you'd like to know that the first donors are practical certainty. Mr. Mahoney, wasn't it? Yes. Are they sure he'll turn up for his fight? Oh, it's his living. But if he fights, he might bleed. And... Don't worry, he won't fight. The police will be waiting for him. He'll come. And tomorrow we'll get Robinson, and that'll make two. If you do get him. And the third? We'll find the third. Please. Well, there won't be a third. Or if there is, it'll be too late. Oh, you must do something, you must. That man you knew 12 years ago, who was he? Can't you find him? Can't you try? You, you can't let her just die. She's, she's all I've got. I'll try. And you say all this happened in 1939, Dr. Carter? Yes. Pretty cold trail, isn't it? I know. I was a student at the Mile End Hospital. Oh, so really you shouldn't have attended him at all? Well, I had no right to, but... Vanity, eh? I suppose so. And you were in lodgings, you say? Yes, quite near the hospital. You can't remember the name of the man? I never heard it. I'd seen him, of course, because he had the room about mine. What about the other chap? I never set eyes on him till he knocked on my door that night. He was a tough, grim-looking sort of character. And you went upstairs with him and found your fellow lodger bleeding to death? Well, that's what I thought. He had a deep knife wound in his neck. He was covered in blood and so was the bed. 
I did what I could to stop the flow. I did stop it eventually. The tough-looking chap just stood there and watched. All he said was, don't talk now, Jacko. It'll be all right, Jacko. Kept on saying it. Jacko? Go on. I decided he must be got in a hospital. I took a sample of his blood. I felt sure I needed a transfusion. I told them I'd come back and shot round to the hospital for help. And when you got back, they'd gone? Yes. I got there with the ambulance and the senior house surgeon. I think he was pretty cross, wasn't he? Very. <laughs> and that was the end of it? Well, more or less. I roused the landlady, but she didn't want to know. Wouldn't even tell me his name. They never came back. He may have died, of course. Oh, I doubt it. They're very tough, these types. He'd been in a gang fight, I should think. How old was he? About uh, 22, 23. Say 35 now. Yes. The other man was a bit older. Yes. Jacko. Age 35, believed to be living in 1939 at... Uh, where did you say your lodgings were? Well, that's the trouble. I can't remember. Oh. It was number five. I remember that. Number five. That's a hell. And it was quite near the hospital. Could you take me to it? I think so. OK, let's go. Just on the right, I think. Should be a pillar box. Oh, there it is. Right, driver. Yeah. Take it easy. I remember rightly, there should be a... Ah, oh, there it is, the garage. Uh, first right. Ramley Street. Of course. You sure? Absolutely. This should be it, sir. Oh. Five Bramley Street. Well, that's bad luck. Well, that seems to be that. Oh, it's early days yet. We'll see if the local boys can help us. Whitechapel Station, driver. Right, sir. Yes. Yes. Very well, Inspector. Goodbye. There's no news. Lane says Bellamy has instructions to pick Mahoney up, and so far as he knows, he's carrying them out. But if Mahoney's due at the boxing place at seven... Seven, they're taking their time, aren't they? Why can't they come? Now, please, Mrs. Bishop. I'm sorry. I'm being a nuisance. No, no, you're perfectly welcome to stay here. No, thank you. I'll go for a walk. Come along. I'm sorry. It, it's just... I a... know. We're human too, you know. Yes. Where is this place where they're fighting? In Kensington, why? I'm going down there. If the police can't get him here, maybe I can. We lost... Robinson, because the police couldn't persuade him to come. If I talk to this man myself, tell him that Penn is dying. But he may be here at any moment. No, he won't be, I know. I'm going to fetch him. What's the address? Please. All right, I'll take you. I don't like the look of him. I never did. Now, come on, let's have it, Miss White. I tell you, Sergeant, I don't know where he is. I wish I did. I said he'd be here at seven. He's never been late for a fight before. I'm not interested in the fight. Well, I am. If he doesn't turn up, what's going to happen to me? Well, that's what I'm wondering, Danny boy. Not showed up yet, huh? It's after eight. He'll turn up. Don't worry. I hope you're right. You know how much this fight means to me? And you. Who's the funny man? Sergeant Bellamy. He's a copper. Business or pleasure? Both. How are your brothers? One of them's doing time, isn't he? Both. Oh, your mother must be pleased with you. Well, one of us has to pay taxes to help keep the boys inside. Let me know when Mahoney arrives. Sure, Eric, sure. Mrs. Sergeant, do me a favor. Take a walk and come back, will you? You're getting on my nerves. Thanks. I want to see Mahoney as soon as he gets here. When Mahoney gets here, he's going straight into the ring. I don't think so. What are you talking about? If he's the man I hope he is, he's coming straight to St. Christopher's Hospital with me. Are you crazy? Don't you understand? There's a big fight going on in there tonight. So there is at St. Christopher's, Mr. Sure, Martin. sure. Look, he'll only be in the ring ten minutes. How do you know? Why? Eh? Look, Sergeant, he's a sentimental boy, this, and if, if he gets to hear about this kid, well... Oh, he... thanks for the tip, Mr. Marks. I'd be prepared to postpone the fight if I were you. Yes. Yes. Perhaps you're right. 
I've got to line something up. You stay here. I'll come back. Kick. Yeah? I need help bad. I've got to cop it in here and I've got to get him out quick. Find Posh Charlie. Mm -hmm. Tell him to phone here to the office. Say that he's from the local police yes. with a message for Sergeant Bellamy. All right. And he's got to get back to the yard immediately. Okay. Where have you been? Walking. Walking, he says. You were due here at seven o'clock. I've just been sorting a few things out in my mind. Sorting a few things out. How many points did that take? I haven't had a drink all day. I've just been walking. Walking. Now, I suppose you're dead tired. Never mind, you won't be standing up much longer. I'd better go and get changed. Now, wait a minute, you stop here. Don't you move out of here. Say, what is all this? Never mind about that. Listen, just do what I tell you. I'm your manager, aren't I? You're working under my orders tonight. Okay, Danny. Detective Sergeant Bellamy? Yes? You want it on the phone, Sergeant? Where? Well, I'll show you. We put the call to Win Jack's office, the booking manager, just in there. Thanks. Bellamy here. Uh, Superintendent Murphy, Kensington Station here. We picked up Mahoney. Yes. Yes, at the Padiga Bar. He's being sent straight to St. Christopher's Hospital. Oh, by the way, there's a message from the yard here for you. They want you to return there immediately. It's urgent, I think. Right, sir. I'll go right away. You'll need a blood transfusion if I get hold of it. That won't be tonight, Mr. Marks. Eh? They found Mahoney. He's at the hospital now. He's not hurt, is he? No. Just sentimental, like you said. Well, good night. Sorry about the fight. These things happen, you know. Not to me, they don't. Charlie. Charlie boy. Not at all, old chap. Tim, come on. Come on, quick. Get him dressed. In a hurry. Okay. Quick. Can we please? My lords, ladies and gentlemen, this is a heavyweight contest of eight rounds, three minutes each round, between the southern area heavyweight champion, Boy Boot. And the former southern area heavyweight champion, Tim Mahoney. Don't hit him too hard. He'll murder you if he thinks you're trying to show off. All right, I won't hurt him. Cut that corner. He knows not to go down before I hit him, then, eh? Remember Casey? <laughs> he went down and I missed him by three feet. This boy's no muck. Better watch yourself. I don't trust Mr. Marks or Mr. Mahoney. Hang the weight! The police were going to pick him up before the fight. He may have refused to miss him. Lane only promised the child. Nobody cares enough. Everybody promises, but nobody does anything. We'll see him after. But he might get hurt and...
That boots a mug. I could do him any time I like. Listen, you keep away from him. I've seen him punch. Don't get any fancy ideas. Look, I can't do it, Danny. I can't throw it. All my life I fought to win. I can't change now. You're going mad. You start the fight now, Booth will chop you to pieces. And if he doesn't, Danny will. I don't like his manner. He's too sure of himself for a guy who's going to lose. Maybe, maybe not. Better not take any chances. Mahoney expects you to open up in the third. Fool him. Open up in this one and put him away quickly. Right. I'm going to enjoy this. Is he going to be all right? I think so. He's not first class, but he's an old hand. He'll keep out of trouble. You shot your boat. After this, you can get yourself a new manager. Yeah, I'm through. Crushed up. You could have had 50 quid, but not now. His eye's pretty bad. Shall I fill the towel in? He's so blooming short of himself. Let him take it. Downstairs, Tim. Downstairs. All right, son, this is it. Next up to championship and a packet of money.
I wouldn't be in your shoes. But I won, Chick. That's all that matters. I won. It's in the record books now. Nobody can take that away. Well, we we're in dead trouble. And he's got a boy on every exit. I've got to get going. There's no sense in me staying. It's got nothing to do with me. We've got to stick together. You say it was your fault and the 50 quid's yours. <laughs> sure it was my fault. I don't need the 50 for saying so. I'm surprised at you boys. A double cross. Now, that wasn't fair, was it? Just an accident, Harry. Sure. Now, if you boys are involved in another accident, that'll make things even. Mark's had nothing to do with this. Sure, Harry, that's what I told you. Tell him again, Tim. Once is enough. Too much. There's a Dr. Carter to see you, Mahoney. He's waiting at my door. Let him wait. Mahoney's busy for the moment. He'll be out in 15 minutes. Right out. What are you going to do, Harry? I shouldn't try that, Tim. You know the boys. Harry, you're making a very big mistake. Correction, you made a mistake. Now, if you walk with us, and no funny business, we'll go out the side door and miss your doctor friend. Get dressed. Okay. Look, Harry, listen, if we... If you... Shall we go? Mahoney, stop! Nice work, gentlemen. Sorry I'm back so soon. Mahoney, you're wanted urgently at St. Christopher's Hospital for blood transfusion. He can't go. He's busy. Say, what is all this? Mr. Mahoney, it's my little girl. She's dreadfully ill. You will come, won't you? Please. Sure, I'll come, lady. If these gentlemen can postpone our appointment. That'll boy, Tim. I'll come, too. Perhaps I can give some blood. Sorry, Mr. Marks. The car will be full. There's no room for you. I'll walk. You heard me, Mr. Marks. Are you ready, Mahoney? Sure. Good evening, gentlemen. It's so kind of you to break your appointment. Mahoney is giving his blood in a good cause. So can you. How's it? Oh, fine, Doc. Help yourself. But save 25% for my manager. I think he's going to need it. <laughs> Mommy, is it late now? Yes, darling. Try and go to sleep. Am I better? Can I come home? Soon you'll be better. Then you can come home. Is she missing me? Yes, darling. As much as I do. I miss you too, Mommy. Who's Seamus? He's her cat. She's very fond of him. Look after this, nurse. It's precious. Yes, Doctor. How much did you take, Doc? A pint. We need three. You're welcome to more if it's any help. Can't be done, I'm afraid, but thanks all the same. How do you feel? Okay. Uh, Doc, do you think I could have a look at the kid? Just a glimpse. Oh, I don't see why not. You asked if you could see her for a moment. Oh, of course. She's asleep. Oh, I won't wake her. She's like you, Mr. Bishop. You'll be taken for sisters when she grows up. When she grows up. Thank you for helping, Mr. Mahoney. Oh, I was only too pleased to help. Well, I'd better be going. I'll see you on your way. Goodbye, Penny. Good luck. I do hope everything will be all right, Mrs. Bishop. I hope so. By the way, we haven't congratulated you on winning tonight. It was a great show. Oh, thanks, though. It's funny, you know, a few hours ago I was through with the fight game. 
I never wanted to see a boxing ring again. That doesn't sound like you, Tim. Well, it's different now, anyway. What made you change your mind? I don't know. Coming here, I suppose. You people are fighting too, aren't you, all the time? And you never give up. Well, I won't either. That's the spirit, Tim. I'll have a bit of a holiday with the missus somewhere, and then I'll try again. Have you any children, Mr. Mahoney? No. Well, someday, maybe, but for now, just a small share of that one in there. Well, I must be off. Goodbye, Mrs. Bishop. Goodbye. Cheerio, Doc. Good luck, Tim. Thank you. Well, we're on the way. Robinson's ship's due in tomorrow night. Maybe in the morning, Inspector Lane will have news of my man. Tomorrow. Another night. I'm going to give you something to make you sleep. Come on. Well, I was going to have a day off today and do some work in the garden. This is a fairly wild goose chase, isn't it? Oh, I've known wilder. Do you really think there's a chance of finding this chap Jacko inside three days? Oh, we found your Mrs. Cornelius in under 18 hours. <laughs> yes. Extraordinary to forget that name. Well, it's 12 years ago. You weren't in the lodgings very long. About three months or so, that's all. How did you manage to find her? Oh, we have our methods. Routine stuff, mostly. Lodging house registers, police and hospital records, food office, employment exchange, postal authorities, borough council files. Bureaucracy has its uses. It's somewhere along here, sir. I wonder if she'll remember you. You'll wait for us, Bert. Yes, sir. What's it to be, eh? Nice bit of attic. I'm just frying. No, thank you. Mrs. Ada Cornelius? Oh, a copper, eh? That's right. Well? This is Dr. Carter. Do you remember him? I stayed with you for a little while at Bramley Street in 1939. And a lot of men have stayed with me. Another one of your lodgers in the room above Dr. Carter's. He had an accident one night. Did he? Well, I don't remember nothing about it. What do you want him for, anyway? We want his blood. Hey? Oh, it's all right. Dr. Carter's is in Christopher's Hospital. A patient of his, a small child, is very ill. She needs a blood transfusion. She belongs to a very rare blood group, Mrs. Cornelius. And that lodger, whoever he was, he had the same group than we. Oh, well, I'm sorry I can't help you. He was only there for a day or two anyway. Well, I see. And you can't even remember his name, eh? Why should I? His friend called him Jacko. That was his name then, wasn't it? You're not being very helpful, Mrs. Cornelius. Look, it's no business of mine. Live and let live, that's my motto. If Jackson liked to... Ah, Jackson. Well, what of it? Nothing. Just nothing. We simply want to find him to save a child's life, that's all. Now, look, I don't want to get mixed up in nothing. You won't be. I give you my word. What, a copper's word? Huh. What was his job? Oh, I don't know. He worked in a factory down City Roadway. They made them uh, propelling pencils and things like that. They give me one once, but it didn't work no good. What was the name of the chap with Jackson that night? Well, you should now. I never saw him. And you can't tell us anything else about him? No, I can't. Hmm. All right. Come on, Carter. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Kind, helpful soul, wasn't she? <laughs> She'd been a man, I'd have punched her on the nose. You'd have improved her looks if you had. She must have known more than that about him. Possibly. Anyway, it's enough. Enough? She told us practically nothing. Nothing? My dear fellow, a man named Jackson, working in a pencil factory in the City Road area in 1939, will be doing splendidly. You know, Inspector, I could quite easily believe you to be a fool. Do you? No. Where do we go from here? Well, I'm going back to the yard to lay on a treasure hunt. You could take the car onto the hospital if you like. Thanks. You let us know. Of course. Jump the lights, Bird. I'm in rather a hurry. Right, sir.
It's all we can do for the moment, sister. Poor little thing. So unfair. You're looking as sick as a dog yourself. Go and have your lunch. Night's past two. I'll call you if you want it. All right. Oh, is it all right for Mrs. Bishop to come in? Oh, yes. Where is she? She's in the waiting room. She's got to be back at her work by half past two. I go and send her in. Nurse, may I have the chart, please? Hello? Did you sleep well? Yes, I did. What were those tablets you gave me? Knockout drops. You went to work this morning. I thought I should. There's nothing I could do here. No. How is she? She's holding her own. You can see her in a few moments, but don't expect too much, will you? No, I, I won't. You'd tell me if... Of course I would. You mustn't lose heart. Dr. Carter, Inspector Lane just phoned. He'd like to see you at Scotland Yard as soon as possible. Right, thank you, sister. That's good news, I'm sure. I'd better get down there right away. Jackson? Yes. You heard about the colored chap? Yes, sister told me. Well, that's tonight. And Jackson's the third, I'm sure of it. Then he'd like Inspector Lane will have him down the yard right now. I never thought we'd find him so easily. Sister will take you along to see Penny. Come in. Dr. Carter, sir. Ah. Well, Carter, you didn't waste any time. I came straight round. Anybody there you know? The bridegroom, that's Jackson. He's older, but that's him, all right. <laughs> Where is he? I'm <laughs> bloody fine, huh? Oh. We found the pencil factory, but he left there in 1940 to join up. And he didn't return. You mean he's dead? No, he just didn't go back to the pencil factory. But we found this chap still there, the best man. Sheldon, his name is. Jackson married a girl called Eileen in 1946. She was a chorus girl at the Regent Theatre. You mean the non-stop review place off Leicester Square? That's the place. After the marriage, Sheldon lost sight of them and he hasn't heard of them since. Oh, Lord. But, my dear fellow, we're doing splendidly, really. Well, I've got to get going. Would you care to string along? Where to? The Regent Theatre. Come and see life in the raw. Not so good at three o'clock in the afternoon, but still. <laughs> Bring that photograph with you. It might be useful. And I thought perhaps you might be able to help us. Oh, yes, that's Arlene, all right. I'd know her anywhere. Nice little act it was. Maureen, Doreen and Arlene, and a little what you fancy. Hmm. Oh, Miss... Uh... De Lamar. Brenda De Lamar. Well, now, Miss De Lamar, I Excuse wonder... Me. Hello, Maggie. How goes it? OK, tell Jimmy. Good. Maggie? <laughs> well, what's it matter? Maggie's safe. Can you imagine how that would look on the bills, eh? Not really. Wave the bird off stage, please. Oh, strong man act. Yes, she was a nice kid, Eileen, and pretty too. All the boys were after her. But it was Jacko or no one with her. He was a lucky fella. And you knew him? Yes, well, he used to come and pick her up after the show. Did you ever go out with them? No, I had to get back to give Michael his bottle. Michael? My eldest. He was only a few months old then, like Suzette is now. This is fair. Pretty, isn't it? Yes, very. That's why I'm back here again in this dump. Oh, well, it's all in the game. Oh, hello, Poppy. It's hmm. much rum, is that? <laughs> and you lost touch with Eileen after she got married? Yes, well, you see, she left the business. She did write once or twice, but, well, you know how it is. Where did she write from? Somewhere on the south coast. I forget now. Small place, I think she said it was. Somewhere near Brighton. Her uncle had a shop there and he gave Jacko a job. Rotten house, this one, Maggie. Very sticky. Good act. Old fashioned, though. They've been doing it for 16 years. Still, it's a nice clean act. Yes. Jackson's still got that job? Oh, I should think so. I did hear the uncle died the next year and left in the business. I don't know who told me. Oh, now for the body beautiful. Oh, blimey, that's me. Oh, just a minute before you go. What kind of a business was this? I've no idea. She never said. A shop somewhere near Brighton. Come on, Maggie, you're right. That's what you think. <laughs> Here, all this duck. Shove it on the stairs and I'll pick it up when I come off. I'm sorry about the kid. She'll get through, will she? Oh, we hope so. Poor oh, little Ma. Miss Delamar, me. Oh, blimey. Well, bye bye. Come and see me again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, the show must go on. Shall we wait? No, that's as far as we'll get here. We've got enough anyway. Enough? But what for? A police message on the BBC. We'll get it out on the nine o'clock news. We'll get it laid on right away. What about Robinson? That's the next job. Can you come down to the docks with me? You might be able to help. Yes, of course. All right.
Pete's hate man is not much they're asking. And you won't lose your job. If you miss the ship, they'll have you flown to Marseilles. You can pick us up there. It's not that I'm worried about, Skipper. What is it, then? There's a child's life at stake. Don't you realize that? Why won't you go? I'm sorry, Skipper. I just can't, that's all. Well, maybe the police will be able to knock some sense into you. Why can't they leave me alone? I don't want to talk about it no more. Ben, Inspector Lane, Skipper. Oh, come in, Inspector. Evening, Skipper. Good evening. This is Dr. Carter. He's in charge of this case. Uh, well, this is Robinson. And I hope you'll do better with him than I have. Oh, Robinson, what's this all about? Why won't you help us? You can't make me do what I, what I don't want to. I know that. I understand you have a child, a little daughter. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's right. But Supposing she was very ill and the one person who could help her refused. What would you say to that, eh? I don't want to hurt no child, sir. But the skipper will tell you I'm not that sort of fellow. Won't you, skipper? That's right enough. So why won't you help us, then? I... Well, I just... The child's white and you're colored. Is that it? Is that what it is? That little child's got a mother, ain't she? Would she want colored blood in a child's veins? What do you mean, colored blood? Your blood's red, isn't it? Yes, but... But... The same as everybody else's. The color of your skin's got nothing to do with it. Don't you understand that? White, black, brown, yellow. Human blood's the same the world over. I don't know about that, Doctor. All I know is that... that white people don't want colored people's blood in them. Who told you that? I just know, that's all. How do you know? Answer the doctor, Robinson. Come on, old chap. Tell us. I agreed to give my blood once to help a white man. I'm not doing it again. When a dog's been kicked once, he don't go near the one who kicked him no more. Well, who kicked you, Robinson? According to the records, your blood was tested during the war. Is that when you were kicked? He was dying. He had been fighting against me, but now he was dying. And my blood could have saved him. You mean he was a German? A Jerry, for Pete's sake. He could have had my blood, and he turned it down. So he died. He died rather than have colored blood in his veins. No, no, no. You've got it all wrong, man. He didn't refuse because you were colored. He was a Nazi. He'd been taught to believe not to mix with anybody. He wasn't a pure German stock. All the same, he turned me down. Of course he did. He'd have done the same thing if you'd been a... A Jew, an Italian, or a Chinese. I'd like to believe that. Oh, don't be a ruddy fool, man. You heard what the doctor said. It's nothing to do with your blood. Your blood's as good as mine, or the doctor's, or the inspector's. It's better. Our blood's no use to Penny Bishop. Yours is. Listen, Robinson. This child is going to die unless the doctor here can put some new blood into her. By sheer luck, you've got the blood she needs. You got hurt by a man who was taught to believe a lie. Because of a lie, are you going to have this child's death on your conscience for the rest of your life? No. Don't, sir. Don't say that. I just promised myself I'd never get kicked again, that's all. The child's mother won't kick you. I promise you that. Come on, Robinson. What do you say? Well, Skipper, I, I reckon you'll have to stoke the ball as yourself till you get to Marseille. <laughs> Robinson, this is Mrs. Bishop, Penny's mother. How do you do? I just wanted to thank you for helping us. You're welcome, ma'am. I'm... Well, I am sorry, I... Uh... He's got something he'd like to show you. Well, it's just a picture of my little daughter. I thought maybe you'd like to see it. Oh, she's sweet. What's her name? Christine. She's uh, only 18 months. Well, you must be very proud of her. I certainly am. I thought maybe you'd like to keep it to, to show it to your little daughter when she gets better. 
Oh, I'm sure Penny would love it. May I? Please. Thank you. For everything. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, Robinson. All clear? Yes, sir. All clear. That's two out of three. Come along, I'll drive you home. That is the end of the weather forecast. The further news, here is a police message. It is for Jack. A supply of a rare type of blood is required to save the life of a child lying dangerously ill in St. Christopher's Hospital, London. The police are trying to get in touch with a man named Jackson, nicknamed Jacko, known to have been living at number 5 Bramley Street, Whitechapel, London East, in August 1939. He is believed to have taken up residence in a south coast town near Brighton in 1946 and may now be the proprietor of a business in that town. He is known to have suffered a severe wound on the left side of the neck and it is possible that the scar is still visible. This man, Jackson, is known to possess the type of blood required to save this child's life. There you are, Mr. Freeman. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Isn't it dreadful? Poor little thing. Dying, they said, didn't they? All for a few drops of this fellow's blood. What's his name? Jackson. Living somewhere near Brighton, too. Well, that might be here, mightn't it, Mr. Freeman? Yes, yes, it might. Good morning. Inspector Lane, CID. Yes, sir. Superintendent Travers, please. I had a message from him. That's right, sir. Come this way, will you? Inspector Lane, CID, sir. Hello, Lane. Nice to see you. Hello, Super. This is Dr. Carter, Superintendent Travers. How do you do? How do you do? This is Sergeant Phillips. Sir? I gather you have some information for us, Sergeant. Well, I might have, sir. Phillips returned from leave this morning. He only heard of the search for this man Jackson an hour ago. And you've got something? Well, sir, it's all a question of the date on which Dr. Carter here attended this chap Jackson in Bramley Street. Within a day or so, sir. It was two or three days before August Bank Holiday. I remember that. Oh, I thought perhaps that might be it. Well? Well, I was a constable on the beat in those days, sir. On the night of August the 2nd, 1939, a certain ropey skinner was found dead, slashed with a razor. He was a car dealer, a suspected fence. We found him at 3.45 a.m. in Potter's Alley. That's just round the corner from Bramley Street. He'd put up a good fight. There was blood all over the place, and he had an open clasp knife in his hand. I reckon that he must have been up against more than one of them. But I don't see what... Just a moment, Doctor. We never solved the murder, but this is a file of all the evidence we collected including the medical report on the dead man. Most of the blood on Skinner's clothes and in the alley was his own, but some wasn't. There were two lots of blood then? Yes. There's a group number of the second lot. O-R-H-C-D-E. Jackson. Looks like it, doesn't it? Well, that's fun, isn't it? We've been looking for a murderer. <laughs> Skinner job to catch up with you. Who says it's caught up with me? You and Jackson were in it together. You told me so yourself. Well, what's that got to do with this? They want his blood for this kid, don't they? How do you suppose they know it's the right blood? You tell me. Because they tested the blood they'd found on Ropley. Eh? How else could they know? It was years ago. Well, maybe someone remembered. See you later, Brett. Okay, cheerio, John. Come on. All right. Anyway, they haven't found Jackson yet. No. Not yet. What are you trying to do, kid? Scare me? Always said you ought to have kept tabs on that fella. Yeah, he won't talk. Why should he? He'd only be putting a rope round his own neck. You might make him talk. Yeah, I've got to find him first. He might come forward on his own. Yeah, he's not that crazy. Even though he did go straight. Fred, I wish you knew where he was. What good would that do? Then you could do something about him. 
Don't you? Don't you worry, kid. I can look after myself. That'll be ten and eight percent altogether, Mrs. Steele. Thank you. Two shillings and two shillings. Much obliged. Oh, Mr. Freeman, I suppose you haven't got the bananas. I'm afraid not. They're still very hard to get, you know. Oh, dear, what a shame. My little girl does like them so. Although I must say I don't agree with her. She always comes out in blotches. Well, it's well, ten and eight percent and the eleven and one's twelve, Mrs. Steele. Thank you very much. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Freeman. Good morning. Hi, Lee. Yes, Steve? Why, what's up, Jacob? Jacob, what is it? Listen, there's a policeman in the shop. I don't want to talk to him. Oh, Jacob. It's about that kid in hospital. It must be. Oh, can't you tell me? Oh, it's too late now, but listen. Remember, I changed my name because of that fellow Brett to get away from him. Yes. Well, there was more to it than that. We killed a man. Is that why you didn't want Yes. To... And if I know about my blood, they're about the murder. And now I... Stop! You see him. Tell him I'm out. Go down to Brighton for the day. Oh, Jacob. You've got to, Eileen. Stall him. Play for time. Tell him to come back tonight. Tomorrow morning. You've got to give me time to think. Oh, no, I can't. Please, Eileen. Please. All right, but... Don't you think it'd be no, better no, to... No, no, go on, quick. Please, dear. All right. Good morning. Can I help you? Well, it was really Mr. Freeman I wanted to see. Oh, well, I'm afraid he's not here. He's had to go to Brighton today. Oh, pity. It's about this blood transfusion business, Kitty in Hospital in London. I expect you read about it in the paper this morning. Oh, yes. Yes, I believe I did. Yes. We're looking for a chap named Jackson. Jackson? Yes. He's got a scar on his neck. Has he? Yes. Same sort of scar as Mr. Freeman's got. Has he? Uh, no! Looks as if he's made a run for it. Oh, that won't do him any good either. I'm afraid we haven't much more time, Cotter. How long? If we don't find the third donor within 12 hours. The supply from Copenhagen was that? No good. Wrong group after all. What about your man? Is there any news? Well, the police are doing their damnedest. I'm afraid it's our only chance now. He can't have gone far, surely. No, and he can't live on air. He's a murderer on the run. He can't keep running for long without a rest. Somewhere. I don't know what to do with that. Hello, Brett. It's your lock, Brett. Well, I still quit, I are you? Have another game? No, I've got some business to see to. See you later. Sure, yeah, Joe. Yeah. Well, Jacob. Long time no see. Yes. Brett. I'm in trouble. You made a mistake running for it, Jacko. Well, what else could I do? You know about it, don't you? You saw that photo in the papers. They were on to me, Brett. I had to run. They'd have got me if I hadn't. Brett, you've got to help me. If they know about Ropey Skinner, they must do. We were in that together. Who says we were? What do you mean? It was your blood they found on Skinner. Not mine. Yes, but you did the job. You know you did. You're some chalk with him. We were in it together, but you did the job. And now they're after you. That's bad, isn't it? Listen, Brett. You can't let me down now. I'd never squeal on here. You know that. Wouldn't you? 
Oh, you know I wouldn't. Well, you ran out on me, Jacko. Didn't you? It wasn't that, Red. I, I just wanted to... Things were different after the war, and I... What do you want me to do? I've got to get out of the country. I thought maybe you could lend me some money and help me get on a ship, perhaps. You want a lot, don't you? Do I? I had a nice little business down on the coast, Brett, and a wife. And just because when I was a kid, I... Okay, okay. How'd you get here? I got a lift on a lorry. What time did they get on to you? About 11 this morning. A copper called in the shop and I got out the back way and then I... Omari, this is Jacko. What are you doing here? He's in trouble, kid. We're going to help him. Amari and me live upstairs. Come on. Where are we going? You can lie low in the cellar for a bit. Amari will fix you up with some food. I'll go out afterwards and see what I can do for you. How do you mean? Know where you are? This street runs down to the river. I know. There'll be a boat there loading cement. I'll see if I can get you aboard tonight. I know some of the fellas down there. How's that? All right. You won't... You'll play fair with me, Brett? Sure. We were in this together, like you said. Now go on, get down there. All right. Are you crazy? He'll never get away. They'll have the ports watched. Don't you worry, kid. I know what I'm doing. Brett, if they catch him, they'll make him talk. No, he won't talk. He won't talk to no one. You don't think I'm going to get mixed up with the police again at my time of life, do you? Hmm. Do we know him? Oh, yes, sir. Runs a billiard saloon in Hammersmith. Nothing against him recently. Last convicted, 1947. Black market whiskey. Come in. Dr. Carter, sir. Ah. Inspector. Well, first of all, what's your news? We're right up against it now. We've got six hours of the most. Take a look at that. Yes, that's him, all right. He's changed, but it's him, all right. The man who was with Jackson when you attended him in 1939. Are you sure? Yes, quite sure. But who is he? His name's Brett Martin. Well, have you got him? Does he know where Jackson is? Well, I have a hunch he might do. Mrs. Jackson talked to the Brighton police this afternoon. She told them she knew her husband was mixed up with this character before the war. I had a hunch he might be your man. But where is he? Can we talk to him? Oh, well, we can try. Come on. You too, Bellamy. Uh, now I wonder. What, sir? Oh, nothing. I just had another hunch, that's all. Come on. Sure, you, Dave. Say hello to Patsy. How much longer? Well, I just started a new game. Can't you say you've got to close early? No, it wouldn't look too good. The sooner he's out of here now, the better. Don't worry. I'm going down to see him now. Got it all worked out. Okay, Jackson, relax. It's all fixed. You're on your way out. You've got me on the boat. Yeah. You know Brampton's Wharf? Just down by the bridge. That's where we collected that stuff for rope, isn't it? That's the one. Well, we're going down there now. So we're going separately. Then if you get picked up, I'm still in the clear. You think of everything, don't you? Yeah. Everything. Now listen. I'm going first, you follow on. Mario will give you the wire. I'll be down there waiting for you. What happens then? Well, then your troubles will be over. Well, you've got to trust me, Jacko, haven't you? OK? Got it all clear? Yes. I've got it all clear. As soon as you get the OK from Mari, you come straight down. Right? Yes. All right. I'm going down to the wharf now. As soon as I've finished, turn him out and get him up. I've told him where to come. Got that clear? Yeah. You won't make any mistakes, will you, Brett? No. There won't be any mistake. Must you take that? Just in case of accidents. I shan't be using the noisy end. When they fish him out of the river, he won't be weighed down with bullets. Back in half an hour. 
Red. Quite a girl, aren't you? Walking out on us, Brett. Ah, just gonna murder someone? Where is this billiard saloon? In the back of Hammersmith Broadway, down by the river. Wish me there in a minute. I've telephoned the local station. They're sending a couple of men around to meet us. Good. Hello, Mary. Yeah, Good night, Sid. Cheerio. Good night. Well. Sorry, we're closed. That's all right. Where's Brett Martin? Is he in? No. Who are you? Fair enough. We're the police. Where is he? I don't know. He went out. When's he coming back? How should I know? What is all this, anyway? Oh, I just want to have a talk to him. Does he live here? Yes. Do you? Now, look here. All right, all right. So, Brett's gone out, has he? Who did he go out with? Jackson? Oh, you've never heard of him? No, I haven't. Don't you read your daily papers? Not today, I didn't. You said it was in today's. All right, then, I did read it. But I don't know Jackson. And Brett hasn't heard of him since before the war he told me so. Brett told you that, did he? Yeah. What would Brett do, do you think, if Jackson turned up here? Would he hide him or hand him over to the police? Well? If he turned up, Brett would naturally hand him over, of course. Why? Well, he's on the run, isn't he? Well, now, how did you know he was on the run? You don't know him, and Brett hasn't heard of him since before the war. I told you I read about it. I heard it on the wireless. Oh, no, you didn't. I think I'd like to have a look round here. Any objections? Yes, I have. You got a warrant? You know your rights, don't you? I had a hunch I might want this. What's up there? Where we live. All right, Bellamy, that's yours. Right, sir. That? Where does that go? Bella. Like I'm to. I think you'd better. We're getting warm. You stay with her, Constable. Oh, locked. It always is. He. Over there.
Well, I stop the fair blood. You got a chance unless, unless he loses some more blood. As much as would save a child's life, you mean? Yes. If you were willing. I've got my job to do, you know, Carter. My job is to bring this man to trial. If he can be kept alive. That's my job. To save a murderer and... We don't know he's a murderer. Only a jury can decide that. Any bishop can't wait for the decision of a jury. I heard what you said. You're the police. You know about Ropey Skinner. Yes. It wasn't me, you know. Brett Martin. You were there with him, weren't you? Yes, but I didn't do it. But you were there. I've been straight ever since. Yes, I know. That won't make any difference either, will it? No, that won't make any difference. That kid in hospital. She's still alive. Yes, she's still alive, as far as we know. I'm her doctor. You want my blood for her, don't you? Can I talk to her? Yes. Have you any children, Jackson? Who are we going to have? I only want. Go on. Your blood can save that child's life. You know that, don't you? But to take it now might very possibly kill you. And if you don't take it? You'll be taken to hospital. You'll live, and in due course, you'll stand your trial for murder. I think she'd like the kid to live. I'm sorry I let you down, right at the last moment. You let nobody down. You wouldn't know how. I can't believe it's only five days ago since... Yes. A lot's happened since Monday. Yes. Sleep tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Will you come to Ward C, that pneumonia case? Oh, yes, I come at once. From one extreme to another, Herbie goes